Hey guys, how are you going? In this video I'll be showing you how to create a full screen navigation component from scratch using plain HTML, CSS and a tiny bit of JavaScript for the opening and closing of the uh, navigation menu. So it's going to be mainly CSS focused, so a chunk of this video or most of this video is going to be uh, CSS but essentially uh, this navigation menu is going to be perfect for uh, websites or projects targeting primarily mobile devices. So it looks great on mobile and it's also got a nice animation when you first open up the navigation bar um, or navigation menu as I just demonstrated there. So anyway, let's get right into uh, the code to of course create this navigation menu. So inside this tab here, as we can see, we are starting from scratch. So inside the text editor, it looks something like this. So first, I want to be creating um, a new directory inside here to hold the CSS and the JavaScript for the uh, navigation menu. So I'm going to call this one FS nav short for full screen nav okay inside here we can make two files of course one CSS file so FS nav .css, and uh, one more for FS nav .js. okay so now we can of course include these in the HTML by simply doing link and then CSS then of course including fsnav, fsnav.css and the same for the JavaScript just down here, just like this. So now we can move on to uh, writing out the HTML for the full screen navigation menu. So let's go below this h1 here and make a new div with a class of fsnav. This will be the main container for the navigation menu. Inside here, we can create the button uh, in the top right corner to close the um, close the menu. This will be a button element uh, with a type of button and a class of fsnav underscore close. And inside here for the content, we're going to be using uh, ampersand and then time. So essentially, that's going to uh, output a nice little x, which is perfect for um, obviously a closing icon. And then below here, we can create each one of our links for the navigation menu. So we can say A with an href of dot forward slash for the current file. Of course, this is going to be changing depending on your own project. You, of course, are going to put your actual links inside here. For the class of this anchor tag, we can call this fsnav underscore link. And for the content, I'm going to put some dummy content, for example, dashboard. And then do this another three more times. We can make one called statistics and performance. And lastly, we can make one called issues. Okay, so obviously completely random names right there. So now, uh, this is uh, basically all the HTML we need to create the menu. So I'm going to save this here and then refresh the browser. As we can see, of course, we get something like this. So now it's all up to the CSS to style this and put everything in the correct position. So let's move on to that now. And we're going to be starting with the fsnav main class. So in the CSS, let's target the SF, uh, sorry, fsnav class. Inside here, we're firstly going to be positioning it uh, to be fixed. So we're going to say position and make this fixed. That way, um, it's going to be on top of everything else, even when you scroll down. Along with this, we can say z-index and make this something high. For example, 100. Now, if the, if the navigation menu does not appear on top on your own project, consider making this number higher. But for me, 100 seems to be fine. I'm also going to say top and make this 0 and left of 0. Uh, for the top left corner, um, the position of the uh, FS nav. Also, a width and height of 100%. To make it cover the whole, uh, you know, width and height of the browser um, viewport. Okay, and I'm not going to save this and refresh, and uh, we can see that uh, obviously all of our stuff has moved to the top. And if we were to inspect this element here, we can see that it is in fact hovering above everything else, and um, it is also a full width and height of the browser viewport. So that's good. Now we can move on to a bit of uh, a bit more styling uh, in the form of a background color. So we can say background here and make this RGBA uh, 0, 0, 0 and then 0 0.85. So basically it's going to create an 85% opaque black background. 
So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. We can now um, display this to be a flex. So we can say display and make this flex. This right here, uh, the reason for the use of the flex box is because um, it's going to be easy for us to uh, vertically and horizontally center each one of those links. So we're also going to say flex direction and make this column. And we're going to say align items and make this center and justify content also to center. And those two properties here are going to vertically and horizontally align the links to the center of the container. So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here and that's basically it for the full screen nav until later on when we work on the actual animation to come in and then come out. So let's uh, let's move on to styling um, this button right here. So once again it's going to be quite a bit of uh, CSS in order to achieve this but um, it looks quite nice and obviously um, it's going to be supported on all or at least most browsers and mobile devices. So anyway, uh, let's go back inside here and we can target the fsnav underscore close class and we're going to firstly just say position and make this absolute. Okay, along with this we can say top 15px, then we can say right and make this 15px also. So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. Of course now it is positioned in the top right corner. So now we can move on to the font for, um, for the actual button. So we can say right here, <coughs> font size and make this something like 50 pixels. We can also say font family and make this sans serif. I'm just resetting this to be sans serif. That way uh, my custom font does not interfere and make it look different to yours. We can also say width and make this 1.25 em and same goes for the height. So the reason for um, the usage of the em units is so it is relative to the current font size. That way when I change the font size here, the width and height are going to scale with it. So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. Okay, so obviously looking quite large, but we're going to be removing, of course, the background and all of the styling for the button. So let's do that right now. Back inside here, we can say outline and make this none, a background also of none, and same goes for the border. So outline, background, and border with a value of none. We're also going to say here border radius and make this 50%. Uh, this is going to um, help. Uh, with the nice little circle uh, effect when we hover over or click on uh, on the button. Okay, we're also going to say uh, color and we're going to make this uh, white for the text color. We're also going to say user select and make this none. That way they can't accidentally highlight the text in the button. And we're going to say cursor and make this pointer. So now saving this and refreshing is going to give us close to the result we saw right in there. So as you can see, it's looking quite nice. Uh, but now we can move on to adding uh, the nice effects when you actually hover over and click on the button itself. So that's basically just that circle background right there. So for this, let's go back inside here. Obviously, uh, the circle uh, back, uh, sorry, uh, the circle border is already done. But we can also say down here and we can set the transition to be uh, background at 0.1 seconds. So basically this way uh, when you hover over um, the close button it's going to take 0.1 seconds to transition the background from nothing to be um, that nice white transparent or opaque color. Okay, so uh, speaking of that let's go down here and we're going to say fs uh, nav close on active and fs nav close on hover we're going to be changing that background color so we're going to say background and make this rgba 255 255 255 and then 0 0.1 for a nice white opaque background we're also going to say webkit tap highlight color and uh, we're going to make this one if i can find it so webkit tap highlight color this one right here. We're going to make this transparent and this is going to remove um, the blue transparent background which you find on mobile devices when you click on the button. Um, it should be fine since we are adding our own custom background anyway. So now saving this and refreshing and then hovering over the button gives us this right here. On mobile devices 
um, with no hover obviously when you click on it the active will work so you get that nice background when it becomes active when clicking on the button okay so we are now done with the actual button we can move on to probably the shortest part of the tutorial and that is going to be of course the links inside here so back inside uh, the uh, CSS let's target the FS nav link um, class and we're going to say firstly here a line height of two just to separate each one of those links we're going to also say text decoration we're going to make this none to remove the underline along with a color of white okay not a font size of 25 pixels and some padding we're going to say padding zero for top and bottom and 20 pixels for left and right and the reason for this is because we want uh, we also want that nice white opaque background when hovering over each one of those links so of course this padding is going to make it look a bit nicer so now let's save this and refresh and we can see we get this right here so let's go back inside the demo we can see of course we get that nice background also for the links so let's do that now we're going back inside here and firstly setting the transition property once again for the links to be the same as the uh, the uh, close button that's going to be background at 0.1 seconds okay we can also just add to uh, uh, this rule set here we can add um, the FS nav link um, to each one of these so now we're also saying when the link gets active or the link uh, gets hovered over we're going to be adding that background so now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here once I just go back and add a comma okay try again save this refresh and we get this right here so perfect so now we can move on to having the nice animation or transition when you are opening up the navigation for the first time so for this let's go back in the CSS and we're going to be applying some uh, some default values for the FS nav so the whole container itself uh, when it initially loads and this right here is going to be hiding it by default so to achieve that we're going to say visibility and we're going to make this hidden we're also going to say transform and set the scale to be uh, to be zero that way it's going to start uh, basically invisible at zero scale for width and height then when you actually open up the navigation it's going to change that scale to be one and that right there is going to give us the nice zooming in effect we can also say opacity and make this zero that way we can actually uh, make the background color also transition and along with this we can say transition and make this transform at 0.2 seconds ease and then out and the same goes for the opacity so opacity at 0.2 seconds and then ease dash out that way these two properties take 0.2 seconds to change leaving us with a nice animation so now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here of course now by default on page load the menu has been hidden so we're going to be adding a modifier class to the uh, to the FS nav and that class is going to be opening up the navigation so back inside here uh, let's add a new rule set for SF nav, uh, sorry FS nav dash dash open and for this we're going to say visibility and make this visible we're basically going to be doing the opposite of what we did right here so we're going to say transform and we're going to make this uh, scale at one and opacity also at one so now let's save this and refresh and then we'll go inside the console here or the uh, dev tools and then on this class here we'll just copy this and then add that dash dash open modifier class to the container press enter and we can see it uh, transitions in quite nicely so that's that's all done we can now move on uh, to the JavaScript which of course uh, will actually be opening up the navigation and setting that class so let's refresh this and go inside the text editor um, the first JavaScript we're going to be adding is actually going to be for the close button itself so this code is going to go inside the actual JS file here so we can say document dot add event listener we're going to say dom content loaded we're going to run this function right here and basically this just means that once the document has been completed uh, loading up we're going to run this function here so 
we're going to say var fs nav close btn so the close button for the navigation menu equal to document dot query selector and pass in here uh, dot fs nav underscore close so basically we're just selecting that close button for the navigation menu so also I am using var here obviously if you can use const it's going to be better but this is purely just for uh, native internet explorer support because I believe in some cases IE does not support the const keyword or uh, constant uh, declarations so now let's go down here and we're going to be saying uh, fs nav close button dot add event listener and then we're going to say for the click we're going to run this function right here and this function is basically just going to say this dot parent element dot class name is equal to fs nav so basically uh, this refers to the button itself so uh, this one right here so we are then saying parent element being this one right here then we're saying class name and setting this to fsnav. That way, um, obviously, when the, uh, when the navigation menu is opened up, um, it's going to have a class of fsnav and then fsnav dash dash open. So, of course, when you press on the button, we're going to be resetting that to be just fsnav. That way, um, all of these properties here are going to kick in and they're going to hide the navigation menu. So, I might just comment this out right here and see if we can actually test that. So, saving this and refreshing hopefully should bring up navigation menu. It does, perfect. So now, let's click on this button and we can see it doesn't work. Uh, let's just find out why. Okay, so the reason why it wasn't working is because, of course, this is the actual properties on the class. So I might just uh, go inside here and then uh, go in the browser real quick and then actually add that class. So fs nav and then dash dash open and uh, then, of course, test the button right here. So now clicking on this should hide the menu and it works perfectly fine. So now uh, we can of course just put some code to actually make the navigation menu visible. So for this, let's go back inside here in the HTML and we can create a new button and set the on click property to simply just open up or run a JS function called open nav. And of course here we can just say open nav. So obviously I do not recommend you actually do this in your production code, but it's going to be up to you as to how you want to make the navigation menu appear. This right here is purely for demonstration purposes. Okay, so let's go in the JavaScript just down here. And we're going to say function and then open nav. And for this, we can say var fsnav is equal to document.query selector. And we can, of course, uh, just select that fsnav class, so this one up here. Then we can simply just say fsnav dot uh, class name is equal to fsnav, then fsnav dash dash open. Okay, so now, of course, by setting this fsnav open class, it's going to make these ones kick in, and of course, it's going to be visible. So now, saving this and refreshing, we can now click on this button, and we can see the menu appears perfectly fine. So that right there is how to create a full screen navigation menu from scratch using plain HTML, CSS and a tiny bit of JavaScript. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.